Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I am diving into a really important topic for every teacher, everyone in the classroom, the importance of teacher self-care. Taking your care of yourself isn't just beneficial for your well-being, it's an essential part of building a positive learning environment for your students too. So what exactly do I mean by teacher self-care? Teacher self-care includes all the activities and practices that you engage in to manage your stress, maintain your health, and ensure that you are mentally and emotionally prepared to support your students. So why am I talking about the importance of teacher self-care? What makes this a hot topic? Well, there are studies that show that teachers who prioritize their well-being are more effective in the classroom. They have better relationships with their students, they manage stress more effectively, and are less likely to experience burnout. Without the burnout, there's fewer sick days. I mean, it goes on and on. This is an important topic. When we embrace the importance of teacher self-care, the numerous benefits for the teacher are also evident, obviously. The benefits would include improved mental health, jo increased job satisfaction, enhanced teaching performance and a more positive classroom atmosphere because you're happy and you bring that to work with you. Okay, so you get it. I know you do, of course you do. What are some top strategies for prioritizing your self-care? I hear ya, I'm aware that in many schools there is not much support for allowing you or encouraging you even to prioritize your self-care other than words saying, of course you must take care of yourself but they're not setting the boundaries for you. Now remember, a boundary is something that you need to set for yourself. So that means if you say, I'm done here for the day, then it's your job to get up and walk away from your desk. And I'm not saying that's easy. Boundaries are certainly something I've had to work on in my life. It takes practice. Try it one step at a time. Okay, so what are some of the boundaries once you've set that boundary between work and personal life? then what kind of things will support you? And of course, this is very individual to each one of you and your context and the world in which you live in. And um, uh, what works specifically for you as an individual, but here are a few suggestions. So engage in physical activities in your personal time. Take the children out for a walk, the students in the classroom. We did laps every morning in my class and it was just round and round the circle. Now we did have a nice view, but honestly, it was nice just to be out hearing the children, breathing some fresh air and moving my legs a little bit, getting a few extra steps in. That was a lovely way to start the day. And in my context, that was not only acceptable, it was encouraged. Your school may not have that um, opportunity available to you. It may not even be safe. <clears throat> so of course I understand the contexts are different everywhere. Uh, practice mindfulness and build a supportive community either, either at school or online. Since I left the classroom, a huge part of my uh, community is online and I've been very encouraged by the people that I've met online. And then of course you have to remember to take breaks throughout the day. I remember many times just sitting at my desk thinking of all that I had to get done and I set a boundary with myself and I said, no, you're going to sit and rest and eat your lunch in silence and just relax and honestly it took me about five minutes and that made a lot of difference for me during the class day when the kids are actually in the class doing some work this may require you to do something as sim simply as give giving your students uh, something to do like a color by code and for five minutes and then take a moment at your desk then Remember, small changes can lead to significant improvements. We're not saying it has to be an hour all at the time, certainly not at the very beginning. Discover in little increments what works for you and then step into it. Once you've um, explored various opportunities and activities, choose a daily self-care practice like journaling, meditating, or simply, again, taking a walk. These little moments of self-reflection and relaxation can make a big difference in how you handle the stress and interact with your students once you start to do that daily implementation of what works for you. Then once you've established one, try adding another one to your habits collection and not necessarily um, a habit that you have to complete any one of them every single day. I mean, I'll be honest, some days I go for a nice long walk and other days I sit down with a good book. 
And other days it's yin yoga for me, a nice stretch class, just breathing deeply. I have multiple habits that I use. So remember the importance of teacher self-care extends beyond your own well-being. Just to kind of sum up, remember that when you take care of yourself, you're modeling vital self-care habits for your students. And it shows them the importance of managing stress and maintaining a healthy, balanced life. That might simply look like you saying, no, I'm sorry you can't stay in at recess. I'm going to take a few quiet moments to myself and read a book. It's going for walks around the school with them or doing an active break with them rather than passively watching them. It may be um, engaging in the color by code on your own at your desk and saying, oh, you know what? I feel so much calmer at the end of it. There are multiple ways that you can model this. So remember, it's for you and it's for them. Thank you. Are you ready to take your classroom management to the next level? Download my gift to you, the free classroom management checklist to get started on the path to better teacher self-care. Use the bit.ly link you see on the screen, scan the QR code with your phone camera, or find the link in the comments below. Thanks for joining me today. See you soon. Bye now. Thank you for joining me today. On the right, you'll see related content to offer you more sites, insights on classroom management. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Again, thanks for joining me. See you soon.